Okay, this time everything's different. This time I have my partner in crime helping me because we got a project that we're going to do together. We're going to do this 16 wheel bush machine, but it's been sitting here for like a year and it's just piled in junk. So let's get this uh, cleaned up for a minute here and then I'll show you what we got. Okay, you can see we got it all cleaned off and we're ready to move it out here and do some work on it. There's not a whole lot on YouTube about these things, so there's going to be a lot by the time I'm done with it because I'm going over this thing in detail. And we're going to make it a couples project because we're both working on it together. And then we're both riding it together. So, Karen here is going to help me. She is my soulmate and my partner in crime. And she lets me work on these things and go off shopping on Marketplace and I don't get in trouble or anything. As long as she can come with me. She likes going on those trips. So what we've got is a 16 horse. Oh yeah, say hi Karen. <coughs> Hello. We've got, sorry, 18 horse Briggs. And it's a very unique drive system here. Um, I, I'm, I'll get into more detail another time. This is just going to be a teaser. We're just going to pull it out and get it ready to start doing some things to it. I'm going to get the oil out of the, out of the center. What you'll see here is... Um, Unlike an Argo, might as well put the hood back down. Unlike an Argo that floats because of the shape of its tub, this one floats because of the number of tires. The uh, center hub there is only what uh, looks like about eight inches wide. So the first project I'm going to have to do is replace a broken chain because our very first ride, Karen and I took with it, I broke it. <laughs> I broke it. Me. <laughs> hey? And then blamed me. Well, yeah, there's, um, yeah, because that was the only difference from when I was riding it before. Anyway, <laughs> moving along, um, I was just showing you a bit of the drivetrain here. It's got a snowmobile type setup on both sides of the motor. So, yeah, there's a primary clutch bolted to where normally you would have the uh, pull, st pull start, and uh, it actually still, you still can do it. It's got a pulley in there for a rope. Secondary clutch, just like a snowmobile, one on each side because each one is feeding its own transmission down in there and then each transmission is operated by its own lever forward neutral or reverse and then it gets to a center gear set down below one on each side to operate each side of the, of the machine so when we get into the steering you're going to be uh, just thrilled with that because there's three kinds of steering systems on this thing uh, it's not really a skid steer like an Argo the steering is kind of light when you turn the steering it will just it actually just pulls in on the primary clutch and pushes that side of the machine harder than the other side so it sort of leans into a turn then get this if you want to turn sharper or skid steer it you just put your feet up on these pads and uh, sandpaper there out and you'll see a brake liner on the inside here actually just comes in contact directly with the belt and secondary clutch really unique and yet I got my brake linings like new so I don't think this machine's really been used a lot so yeah you can put your feet up there and skid steer it that way also from a stop on loose or slippery ground you can put one transmission in forward and one in reverse and just do a 180 right on the spot that's the general overview of the thing. It's really only a two-seater. I think you could probably put another person on there, I suppose. But uh, this is going to be a hoot. I'm going to document it in minute detail. Because like I say, there's, only, there's very little on this on YouTube. There's two videos that I've found. One where a guy's just doing a 180 on the snow and driving off. Another guy's pulling a moose out of the bush. But it's a whole different drivetrain. You can see it's... it's um, hydraulic steering of some sort and it's got just like a Honda V-Twin or something in there uh, it's a totally different setup this is 1979 uh, now it's really cool that I recently came in contact with a fella that uh, I can't remember now if he worked in the company that made these or if he knows somebody that works in the company that made these but either way he knows a lot about the manufacturing process of these and he's been giving me some tips on how to do different things and he sent me a copy of the original manual for it which is spectacular it's really cool I'll be posting up pictures of that because it's all hand-drawn all the um, 
all the little uh, diagrams and stuff are hand hand drawn. That's pretty cool. And he's going to help me out, and uh, I'll uh, I'll talk a little bit about him another time. But uh, he says he's really into these things again since I've been showing an interest. He knows the guy that bought all the parts uh, inventory when these things went out of business. Uh, when this company went out of business, uh, the fella I think he's up Ottawa way. No, um, hmm. No, I don't remember now, but. Uh, there's a bunch of parts sitting in someone's garage somewhere. I just got to get a hold of them. I don't really need anything right now, but I might. And we're going to put this in the water, and we're going to do adventures with this thing, and we're going to try it, and we're going to work it like it was made to be worked. So I think that's pretty cool. I have never seen another one like this. You know, you spend $1,500 for an Argo, and you're getting a pretty darn beat-up old Argo, something from the 70s that's really kind of useless. This is a tough machine. This one's brutal. And uh, for fifteen hundred bucks, what a score! Looking forward to firing it up. Right now, we got the broken chain, and the throttle cable came off. Uh, it actually didn't come off; it broke. So I've got another one, and uh, it's on there. But uh, I stopped working on it, to do other things. But now we're going to get back into it. So one of the very first things we'll do is put the throttle cable back on, so that I can start the motor and move it as I need to. Get that chain fixed first. Let's get it rolling and get the oil out of it. operation here is is to lift the front of the machine up really quite high because the center tub is full of oil and to change that oil out you have to take this little square cap off the back and let it drain out and you never want to get water in your uh, I mean you want to do this now and then because condensation will get water in there and maybe if you're floating it a lot in the river a lot you're gonna get water in there and come winter time, if this thing freezes solid, you're going to split your aluminum tub and then you won't be happy. Let me show you what that is. That must be like a floor drain because I think it's sealed in this section down here. And then, well, I'll find out once I get into it. But I see covers and things on the side. Um, I think those are access covers to get to the chains. I'll have to review in the manual. I'm also going to redraw the manual in CAD. I'm going to make really nice drawings, sketches, text, and uh, provide that to folks that might be needing one for their very rare bush machine. 
Now, not long after the 70s, early into the 80s, uh, this was no longer called the Bush Machine. It was no longer made in North Bay, and it was no longer made by Summers. A um, bit of a sad story. The the owner of this company, the designer, the creator of this machine, actually died in a plane crash. He was piloting his own plane. He was a trapper and he flew his own plane and this is the machine he built to get him around and he was just about to market the thing big time. He had Japanese backing apparently to start a factory and he crashed his plane and died. So there's all these tooling and parts and design and everything ready to go. So Trying to think of the name of the company that bought it. I'll, I'll fill that in afterwards. I'll voice over or whatever you need to do. But it was no longer called a Bush machine. It was called the Bush Swamper, I believe. So basically the same machine with different refinements now and then. I think it kind of got a little more automated. This, this one is basically hand built. All the welds are hand done in a jig. Um, very little automation on this. So kind of interesting to look at all the little bits even that drain plug is you know just a square plate of aluminum it's not you know you think they put a bolt or something in there like everybody else does but no we'll just we'll just tap and thread four holes and bolt on aluminum plate so I have a leaky you may not be able to see in the dark here but I do have a leaky seal on this one rear axle so I'm gonna have to uh, find out how to figure that out I did mention it to my friend from way up north that's educating me on this and uh, he said oh yeah I know this it's just gonna be a standard part you can you can find seals it won't be a problem okay next step is to pull that plate off and drain the tub there's water coming out that's not good <laughs> oh look at all the water oh, shit. okay get a look at this that's all water draining out of this tub that is so bad because that hopefully it didn't split the tub. Um, I don't think it did or else the water would be coming out somewhere else, right? So that is not a good sign. It's just oh pouring water. I don't think I even need to take that plate off. At least not until the water's done draining. So I'm just gonna sit back and watch that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this whole machine's full of water. Okay. I think it was half full of water. Now you can see it's kind of turned into a yeah, it's turned into like a coffee color now, so we're getting into some really nasty oil mixed with water. Looks like I'm also going to have to pull the plug off because it's too thick to really drain through the little bolt holes very well. Too bad. Too bad. They, you know what? I might modify this a little bit and put a bigger bolt right in the center of this plate so that I can screw it back in real quick if I need to, if the can's overflowing. All right, here goes. And forget this. It's slowing down. Can't see nothing. Top holes aren't really dripping anymore. They're just running down to the bottom and falling off. So I kind of think that that's going to be it. so well there's no well they don't see any wells and there is sealant so it's been off before so there was far more water in there than there was wood oh yeah Way I more. can't believe I got away with this it's fingers crossed that there's no damage to the tub from frozen from ice. As a team, we decided to leave it to drain overnight. <laughs> As a team working on this project. You're going to see the two of us working on this all the time. It's going to be great having a partner. 
Another set of hands in there. Mm -hmm. my hands small. That's right, so you can reach into like moving gears and belts and things That's where right. my hands won't fit. So it'll work nice. All right, so we're going to close this one right now. We've done enough damage for one day, but hey, we started. And, uh, you know, if you subscribe, you'll keep up on what we're doing with this thing. It's going to be a long playlist because everything we do on this is going to get recorded, and including the rides and the repairs, and then the rides and then the repairs. <laughs> but looking forward to it. It's going to be good. But there's your teaser video. There's the introduction to boots. That's right, we've named it Boots because of all the boots it sits on. Let's get her done. Yeah, so let's get her done. <laughs> like the girl said. Right on. That's all for now, folks. From Ontario, cheers. Take care.